to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. Let's read it together. One to read. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. The apostle is speaking now. He's saying part of my apostolic assignment is that every once and again I as a system of mentorship remind you of the truths that you probably may have known some may be on their way understanding it some would have held it to a measure but he said I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things it was dr. Mike Murdoch that said repetition is what creates persuasion that means the more a thought and a truthful information is repeated eventually your mind will embrace it as true and your life will show the results are we together so um i will title this keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom you can put in bracket revision series the keys of the kingdom it's a revision series this is part one next week we'll look at part two the goal is to bring to our understanding it's like a refresher course praise the lord this week and next week by the grace of god i'm going to be dealing with the matters of the kingdom the factors the laws of the spirit the truths that we have so labored through the years to teach and continue to teach that are responsible for power for grace for relevance for a life of meaning impact and so on and so forth are we together the keys of the kingdom a revision series Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 Lord, we receive understanding. Matthew 16 and verse 19. Read with me, it's projected. Everyone inside and outside, one, two, go. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Uh huh. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Let's look at Amplified. The King James Version here does not do the kind of justice that we seek. Um, it doesn't give you the kind of expression that, that will help you understand. Let's read it now and then I begin to teach. One, two, read. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. And whatsoever you bind, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose, declare lawful on earth, must be what is already loosed in heaven. Thank you, Father, for understanding. Let us grow. Let us rise. In the name of Jesus, let us become living wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is speaking here and he's making a very interesting statement. Please pay attention. Remember, I told us that Jesus raised disciples who would later become apostles through a system of discipleship that we call mentorship. And the way he started, very interesting, from Matthew chapter 1, 2, 3, 
4 when he was done with his temptation he departed in the power of the spirit right from matthew chapter 5 until he resurrected every day was a bible study session every day was a prayer session every day was a mentorship session they were exact spiritual truth that he was teaching them he was teaching them on the kingdom reorganizing their understanding about various aspects of the kingdom life he brought many prophecies to lamb light and began to shed light on them he brought many perspectives misrepresentations about the god of the hebrews that they had known and began to correct them then he used parables parables to explain what he called the mysteries of the kingdom are we together and so when we get to the 16th chapter of matthew he's now talking about the keys now theologically speaking there is only one key to the kingdom everybody say to the kingdom there is only one key to the kingdom and that key happens to be the door himself jesus said it this way he said i am the way i am the truth i am the life no man cometh to the father except by or through me so we know that there is only one key to the kingdom there are not many ways almost all of the founders of different religions around the world out of the three to five thousand religions we have currently and growing in the world all of the founders proposed to be the keys of the kingdom that means they are the access point to enter into a certain dimension of life civilization consciousness or reality are we together we have several religions across the world with different founders purporting different facets of the revelation of god but jesus came and made a bold statement that he was and still remains the only authorized access so there is only one key to the kingdom the bible declares that there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved do you know why i'm teaching you this look up please look up the time has come in the church where we must be biblically sound we must be theologically sound. The context of our spiritual communication must be balanced, must be intelligent, must be theologically sound. You must be able to make full proof of your ministry, defending the faith by understanding what you believe. Not just believing blindly. Are we together? The days that we live in would require conviction conviction that comes not only through encounters but through understanding so i'm taking our time to teach you this because many believers are not mentored to understand god the average believer understands different aspects of power glory here and there but the sequential growth this kingdom has an explanation you need to know the way the kingdom was built and how it operates are we together yes so this looks like very basic but it's amazing the level of failure you will command not knowing this there is only one key to the kingdom there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved are we together the bible says in romans chapter 10 reading from verse 8 to 10 it says that um the word is nigh thee in thy heart and in thy mouth even the word of faith that we preach it says that if thou shalt confess with thy heart the lord jesus thy mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead he says you shall be saved are we together yes then it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and then with the mouth confession is made that leads to salvation so this is the technology that God employed. So when you follow that door, who is Christ, the Bible calls him the new and the living way. He becomes the only access point. If you have not passed through that door, you are not saved. Are we together? It doesn't matter how you are around church, you are not saved. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, John 3, 
Thou art a man, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Then in verse 3, Jesus is teaching now and he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he's talking about being born again now, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Are we together? And then, except a man be born of water, verse 5 now, and the spirit, he shall not enter the kingdom. So we know there is one key, and only key to the kingdom. But there, when you get into the kingdom, there are the keys of the kingdom. Not a key. The, the basis for access that help us to function in this kingdom, there are many. The laws of the kingdom, the methodologies of the kingdom. You need access to just one key. Jesus the son of the living God, the new and living way. But when you come into the kingdom, listen carefully, you need to know that there are keys of the kingdom. Say keys of the kingdom. And the sequence is this. Watch this. A believer's... Come. You stand here. Face me, please. My friend, please come stand here. Face me. No, you stand here. Are we together? My dear, come. Now, watch this. They represent different levels. This gentleman, for instance, is the one the Bible calls a natural man. Everybody say natural man. That means one who is alienated from the life of God. He is not yet a partaker of the life of God through the new birth experience that we call salvation. Is someone learning? You have to understand what I'm teaching you. The first ministry that this man needs is not a preacher's ministry. The first ministry that this man needs is the ministry that the Bible calls the goodness of God. Listen very carefully. The Bible says it is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. So there is a dimension of the encounter with the goodness of God. That this man needs to have and that dimension is sponsored by the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit is the one who can make this man even have the need see the need for Jesus in his life John 16 Jesus still in his mentorship session began to introduce the disciples to the ministry of the Holy Spirit Jesus started by saying, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. He says, how be it, listen carefully, that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall guide you into all truth. Are we together? He shall take of what is mine and shall give to you. Then the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has a threefold ministry to the world, the world of natural men. He says he will convict you of three things. Number one, of sin. Say sin. Number two, of righteousness. Say righteousness. Number three, of judgment. Are we together? So it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to bring this man to a point. Now he will need the cooperation of a preacher because the Bible says, how shall they hear except they be a preacher? Are we together? Are you understanding the methodology of the kingdom? except they be a preacher so god depends on men to allow the ministry of the holy spirit to find expression now this gentleman is sitting in koinonia or any meeting and he hears the word of the lord coming and listen it is not any preaching that saves understand this it is not any preaching that saves there is an exact spiritual information that leads to the salvation new birth now, all truth in the Bible have a measure of light and liberty that they bring. Listen to me. But there is an exact message that turns a sinner to become a righteous person. Are, are you following now? This is a refresher course. We are dealing with the things that many believers do not know that continues to make their life and their assignment within their environment ineffective. Now, it is true that I can teach any message and raise an altar call, but that even if it is in one minute, there has to be a way 
of routing that altar call such that the content are located to be captured for salvation is represented there are we together the gospel that saves is called the gospel of salvation everybody shout say the gospel of salvation now there are many gospels in the bible by many gospels we don't mean erroneous gospels the word gospel just means an announcement of glad tidings it doesn't have anything necessarily to do with jesus as it were it's just a proclamation of glad tidings the word gospel means good news are we together a proclamation of an information that gladdens the heart that's what is called gospel so there is the gospel of salvation and the gospel of salvation is a message everybody say a message the gospel of salvation is the revelation listen carefully the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love a revelation of the father's love are we together manifested in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ and the object of that sacrifice is man first and then creation the death of jesus does not only affect men it affects creation are we together so the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the son jesus to man first and then creation and then man's response everybody say response man's response to that gospel who had believed our report to that man the arm of the lord had been revealed are we together yes so when i hear the gospel what is the gospel for god so loved the world that he gave he proved his love for man by allowing jesus his son to come to the earth now watch this the assignment of jesus on earth was not to die death was simply a gateway to help him fulfill that assignment are we together jesus came to earth to fulfill a threefold assignment number one jesus came as a representation the image of the invisible god until jesus came they did not know god so they would they would accredit or credit both the things that were done by the devil fallen angels and god to the god of the hebrews until jesus came there was no bodily representation of the god of the heavens so jesus came as the image of the christ made manifest are we together the bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory even as the glory of the father full of grace and truth and the bible calls him the image of the invisible god the invisible god that hitherto we only heard about and a few people had certain encounters of different dimensions of him that god is now personified in the christ so you can look at jesus to know who god is jesus came as the will the thoughts of god the word word of god is the word logos the thoughts the intent of a man seeking out for expression are we following tonight this is basic salvation that is not basic at all it is the strengthener of your christian faith you have to know how you came into this life so jesus came to reveal to men the image of the invisible god as a commitment and a desire to help men know god number two jesus came as an agent of reconciliation the bible calls him the mediator of the new covenant what does that mean the bridge like two aggrieved parties the word mediator is a legal term it's a system of reconciliation that means two aggrieved parties or at least an aggrieved party that has broken relationship and fellowship so jesus came as the bridge but in order to fulfill that ministry as savior and mediator he needed to pass through the legal system of the spirit and there are ordinances that have been in the realm of the spirit that he had to subscribe to ordinance number one the soul that sinned it shall die it's a law that any soul that sins the penalty 
is death are we together yes ordinance number two without the shedding of blood i'm doing a quick review so that we'll just pass this area without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins no atonement no remission are we together so jesus needed to satisfy that legal term number three that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone so only death leads to resurrection anything that is alive in itself cannot resurrect it will have to die and then resurrect with another life are we together now so jesus being the mediator watch this number one he came as a manifestation of the image of the invisible god number two he came as the mediator of the new covenant to fulfill that ministry of reconciliation drawing men connecting men to god and he needed to route it through abraham and by so doing fulfill the legal claims of justice the third reason why jesus came was to perform his high priestly ministry you have to understand this that he is a priest after the order of melchizedek that even in resurrection he had to take his blood the blood of the eternal sacrifice and he went before the tabernacle in heaven that was adumbrated by that that was on earth and he poured his blood upon that tabernacle so that once and for all salvation became real to men are we together yes so the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the father demonstrated through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus to the end that when you hear that gospel and believe that it is true that jesus has satisfied the legal claims of justice that now standing before the throne you stand guiltless with the righteousness that is equal to that of the christ are we together not like that of the christ when you receive that report the bible says immediately two things happen to you number one the first thing that happens to you when you declare jesus as savior and lord is that there is a translation spiritually speaking from the domain the kingdom of darkness that means a domain that is under the legal authorization of satan into the kingdom of his dear son now follow me very carefully are we together and then the bible says that when there is that translation the second thing that happens and all these things happen concurrently is that by believing it is credited to you for righteousness like faithful abraham i hope you know the first person to hear the gospel was abraham our father the gospel was preached to abraham in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed abraham believed god and it was credited to him and that formula of abraham is what was given to the saints to hear the report of the lord and to believe by faith then it is credited to us as righteousness people like Kenyon define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt without a sense of condemnation and without a sense of inferiority this is what he calls righteousness I will want to add that more than that righteousness is the manifestation of the nature of the Christ in a man it's more than just an act the manifestation of the nature of Christ in a man is called righteousness righteousness is first who you are by reason of your believing the report of the Lord now number three we are given the Holy Spirit according to Galatians chapter 3 Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord the Bible says being made a cause for us for it is written in the law of Moses that cost is every man that hangs upon the tree why that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles what is the blessing of Abraham I've taught it here justification by faith the blessing of Abraham is not a pronouncement no there are blessings of Abraham there is the blessing and there is the blessing of Abraham three of them are not the same 
the blessing of abraham is the justification that comes by faith the blessings of abraham are the speakings that came upon abraham as an inheritance by god that we can route through the promise the blessing is the holy spirit are we together so the bible says that the blessing of abraham justification by faith might come upon the gentiles to give us now access to receive the promise of the spirit by faith so we receive the holy spirit the holy spirit is the representation of the life of god he is the one we call zoe now listen very carefully the word eternal life is not something the holy spirit brings it is his presence in us the holy spirit does not bring eternal life the holy spirit is the life of god he is what we call zoe he is what we call the blessing Are we together now watch this this man let me come back to our, our terms now as we used this man has been convicted of the holy spirit and a preacher makes what we know to be an altar call this gentleman comes out receives the life of god acknowledges christ as his savior and lord and according to the authority of scripture the bible says this man is saved because he believed in his heart unto righteousness and he confessed with his mouth the lordship of christ step one everybody says step one this is not the end of the journey he has now entered into the kingdom he has had one key the key to the kingdom jesus christ now that he's in the kingdom watch this this man can remain unfruitful forever right now in the kingdom he's no longer a natural man but he's also not a spiritual man the bible calls them carnal men the word carnal means sensual they have not grown to the level now where their impulses are aligned to the word and the spirit he's not a natural man but he's not yet a spiritual man in experience are we together now many believers can remain at this level forever and be in church for 10 years and in honor to your longevity in church you can be called a deacon from a deacon you move to a pastor and then to whatever now humanly speaking you are making advancement but spiritually speaking you are still here are we together now watch this it is for this man that ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12 was given that he gave unto some apostles listen now the fourfold or fivefold as we call it is about to be introduced now he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers why to do the work of the ministry i mean for the perfecting or the equipping the maturing it is called of the saints so that this man now matured will do the work of the ministry are we together so the holy spirit is the next person to be introduced to this man because the word of god without the ministry of the holy spirit will turn this man to a religious man he will receive the knowledge that puffs up ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth the bible says for from such depart are you following me tonight so this gentleman gets born again the the sequence of spiritual growth is that for his health look up please for this man's health and his speed in growth it is important to be planted within a community of believers because being planted within the community of believers now will afford him the opportunity to be discipled an interesting word i'm introducing now say discipleship please shout it say discipleship it's a word that has been abused by religious um religious perceptions most of what we call discipleship in the body of christ is conformity to the doctrines and the patterns of a denomination but god's idea of discipleship is not conformity just to the patterns and the doctrines of a denomination or conformity to the central thought agreed upon by a body of religious people that's what most times we call discipleship is the reason why after many years of mentorship the people don't look like christ they look like the error are you getting what i'm saying now 
Yes. The Bible says, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He started it, he should end it. So this gentleman is planted in a ministry like Koinonia. Are we together? Now he has an assignment. His assignment is to remain open and to know that now he must grow. That growth is a possibility in the kingdom. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. This guy is saved, but he needs to grow. If he does not grow, then Galatians chapter 4 becomes his tragedy. Are we together? He says, this I say then, an heir, for as long as he's a child, differeth not from a slave, although he be lord of all but that he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed. So an heir, provided he remains a child, bankrupt of the knowledge that provides growth, that he does not differ from a slave. This gentleman's next part of call is to grow. Everybody say growth. The growth is threefold. Number one, the first dimension of growth for this gentleman is to be brought to a point where the foundational pillars the foundational pillars of the christian faith are taught him i'm showing you how this person will become a powerful man tomorrow the foundational pillars the bible begins to tell us in in hebrews chapter 6 that leaving these basic doctrines let us move further to more superior things paraphrasing and he said the doctrine of baptism and of this and of that and of that there are basic foundational pillars of the christian faith please look up if this guy receives the best of mentorship he should be introduced number one to the value of the word of god in the life of the believer this is key it's not something he should learn later he should learn that in this kingdom the boundaries of god's commitment to us is scripture he must learn that the primary way of knowing god is scripture all scripture were inspired by the holy ghost profitable for reproof for doctrine for correction that the man of god may be mature fruitful in every good work are we together so this man must be brought to a point where he understands the value of the word of god number two this man must be brought to a point where he understands the foundational value of the priesthood ministry of the believer the priesthood ministry is not something he should learn when he's ordained into ministry by priesthood he should be able to understand the power of prayer as a system that transforms you and as a system that helps you to legislate in this kingdom when this man is not taught prayer early it will affect him are you seeing the sequence of growth number three this man must be taught the value of corporate fellowship and community life as a system for preserving kingdom values i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity are we together it is like the oil that comes upon the head of aaron down to his bed to his skirt his garment he said there the lord had commanded the blessing this man must be introduced to the foundation of corporate fellowship number four this man must be introduced to an understanding of his identity in christ it matters for this man to know who he has now become in christ the bible says in galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 it says and if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise there are many things that the bible calls the believer for instance it says behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god is a name he must know 
Number two, the Bible tells us that we have been raised up together with Christ. Are we together? He must understand that fact. Number three, he must know now that he has become a partaker of the spirit. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father, that this man has access to God. According to Hebrews, he says, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and help in time of need. This man must know he has access to the wisdom of the spirit now. He has access to fellowship. He should understand this as a foundational pillar of his spiritual growth. He must see the necessity of the fivefold ministry in his life as gifts given to the body to help mature him. The next thing is this man must understand that he has a purpose and a destiny in Christ. It's a foundational understanding. It's not something he should have when he graduates from school or gets married. No. The Bible talks about believers being predestined according to his eternal counsel. He must know that he was born for a reason. Are we together? When this gentleman, he was, this guy is stooping down to respect me, his back will pain him. Oh, stand, stand straight, eh? He respects me and he's leaning like this. God bless you for your honor. That's how the world will bow before you, eh? Now, watch this. But, but you can't you can stand. You have, you have tried. Let's, let's, let's be fair on the gentleman. Praise the Lord. Now, do you know that when this guy now understands these things, they are very strong pillars now he can begin to move to the deeper matters of the kingdom are we together what we call the mysteries of the kingdom he will now begin to understand the methodologies the ways of god he now begins to understand the keys of the kingdom he now begins to understand the mysteries that connect to the results that he desires already remember that the foundation of his life is god remember that he knows who he is in christ because this man is about to go through challenges somewhere in his life and if he's not told who he is in christ and the value and the power of prayer and he does not have a system of mentorship that will tell him he's all right this guy will be discouraged soon when you get born again there's usually a bonus for you whether you pray or not things just work you are jumping is to motivate you are we together and you look at believers laboring and you are like ah, ah you mean this thing is this simple it's an encouragement so that whatever comes your way you will know your life is in his hands yes do you know that this gentleman haven't completed this realm will now move to the next realm where he's mentored on the ways of god now i begin to teach this guy on the principles of the kingdom here is where we begin to show him mysteries in the kingdom that there is a mystery that connects longevity there is a mystery that connects exemption how favor works how giving works how the relationship with the holy spirit is built how the anointing grows the necessity for this this guy continues to learn and learn them again while he grows now this content is graduating this guy from a carnal man to become a spiritual man with proper mentorship he will get to a point where he becomes strong and mature his convictions are strong he's not only believing because a pastor said a prophet said an apostle said he has come into an a, a conviction about god watch this when he gets to this level the next assignment is for him to now be taught the principles that make him a battle axe thou art my battle axe and my weapon of war that you are not only in the spirit to grow alone are we together now that is time for you to mature and now become useful this is where you need to now understand the principles of kingdom advance 
what it means to become an ambassador what it means to be mightily used by God it is at this point this man begins to learn the laws of influence this man begins to understand the deeper dynamics of the power of the Holy Spirit you see this is how he started as a naive confused Christian not knowing his left from his right and with a few months and a few years of proper discipleship look what he has become a mighty battle axe now look at this why are many believers in church for many years the average church has two to three services per week and after many years the believer is still here fighting for appointment fighting for deaconry fighting for eldership fighting for this and that and that and that and that and sometimes the pressure and politics of ministry will make the person to be ordained here as a pastor are we together now a baby about to lead babies he does not know anything about the things of god members say we don't like you and he says i'm not doing ministry again why because he's a baby he's broke and he fetches from church offering and says i will return it later he's a baby he has not seen the value and the excellence of service this guy is persecuted and he says god why me these are the languages of babes he says strong meter for them who are of full age who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses unto godliness if i turn to god today and say why me is is an embarrassment um is, is, is an embarrassment to his investment in my life not at this level the difference between this man and this woman is that at this level you should have gained mastery the things of the kingdom you should not be learning how to walk at this level when you see someone who is you don't put babies on wheelchair but if an adult cannot walk, you put him on wheelchair. Nobody puts a baby on wheelchair and says, I said you should walk and you are not walking. Nobody prays for a baby for a miracle and says, rise up and walk. It is, it is allowed in that realm. But when you become an adult and you cannot walk, it's an attack. Listen, there are, when people say they are matured as believers, ask them what makes you think you are mature say i'm not a baby christian at all i'm not why what makes you believe say i've suffered in this life no that's not the reason why you are you are a mature christian not at all it is true that the furnace don't get me wrong please understand this it is true that the furnace of affliction can refine but suffering is not the reason why you are a mature christian you may be suffering as a result of ignorant attack that you don't have the knowledge for This person should be able to help this person in a heartbeat. This person should be equipped with such spiritual knowledge. Listen, if I come and say, Pastor, I'm in trouble. Like an encyclopedia should just open. Which mystery is allocated to solve this man's problem? This is the justification for being spiritual. When you talk to this person and say, um, You know the way life is. You are supposed to be here, not here. This person should have at this point had a covenant with God or be connected to strong covenants that even where his or her personal faith fails, there should still be a way of routing results. Otherwise, who brought you here? Who qualified you here? Are you seeing that a lot of baby Christians continue to say they are much at this realm people can start falling in your meetings you don't need to get here right here in fact before you understand one impartation and you will use falling down and say watch Benny Hinn is throwing people me too I'm throwing people we are the same whoever told you please understand what I'm teaching you this is a refresher series that many believers do not understand so the bible says i will give you pastors after my heart men of god hear me 
you have an assignment to build people sequentially you must know what they are to become not hope that you are doing the right thing like an architect when an architect is building he does not sit down hoping that i hope the building is coming well he has the master plan already he's only hoping that you get to a point where you are able to understand at this level there is something you can tell god that will make god act in a certain way to this man that he does not yet have it is one lord reach unto all but my brothers and my sisters something you have done a process of growth has brought you to this point there is a level of relationship and intimacy you have with god you cannot fear their fears no you cannot if me and this guy pray he's going to be frustrated we can pray a general church prayer but if he comes to the secret place to pray with me this guy is going to be tired he's going to pray from his realm and he will hear me talk to god in a way that does not make sense it may not even sound scriptural but it is there is a level i will call god names he has not had anywhere it's a name that my experience gave god He can come to the secret place and see me sitting quietly on the ground like a herbalist and say sir let's pray i said that's what i'm doing and he said i i thought prayer is just when you are talking and rolling and i say yes just do what you are taught you are correct only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul you satisfy my soul sing it one more time yeah. only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul now listen don't worry you can stand back this is already a refresher course many of us are born again but I tell you why our lives are unfruitful. I can watch you pray for one hour and tell you at least 10 things you have done wrong. As serious as you are praying, I will tell you the part that will be answered and the part that will not be answered. I will tell you what was unnecessary in the content of your prayer. Now at this point, God will not show you because the goal is not the accuracy of your prayer, but the zeal of your prayer. So he will allow the error just pass there's no need for accuracy he's cultivating zeal you can pray and make mistakes the goal is that you become prayerful the realm of accuracy is waiting for you in the future so you will find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense but the more you pray the more god is backing it the idea it is easier to edit your prayer life when you have received the spirit of prayer and supplication when you are corrected here you will be discouraged when you get here you will find out that many things you prayed for were already answered in your growth you were never supposed to pray for them growth already answered that prayer request only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul please sit down sit down There are many people parading themselves as matured Christians. You say, why? You say, I've been born again for 10 years. What does that mean? What does that mean? It is true that longevity, if well utilized, that's time. And if you invested in it spiritually, the Bible says that he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting. But he that sows to the flesh will reap corruption. You can sow to the flesh for many years. It does not mean you reap life. Are we together? 
this thing I told you is the basic foundation of any believers Christian life if you do not know this you will leave God eventually something about the absence now imagine that where, where are you come imagine that this guy just got born again and the next thing he's hearing is a teaching on influence or a teaching on prosperity this guy is going to fail woefully do you know why because it is dangerous to be taught prosperity as a carnal man the flesh will not allow the purity of that message to bless you the message will fall on lust that is already there and it will make this guy a dangerously materialistic person so there is a sequence of growth not every topic is relevant to every believer imagine that this guy gets born again and his first message is love and and life partner and relationship do you know what is going to happen to this guy he's already dead even before the series on relationship is over because i can tell you this guy's prayer life is not going anywhere this guy's life is not going anywhere the awareness that there is a beautiful lady to see and marry would not you think he will pray the way you are praying that you are praying like a madman not when you are aware lady is looking at you no how what if i I, I miss the moment and the flesh is there deceiving you and you are failing programming woeful failure but if this guy is taught that the beginning of his life is God he can be praying like a madman any lady that does not like that demonstration does not like a profitable destiny yes sir There are people today who cannot pray in tongues because they were taught something before tongues. And what they were taught corrupted their passion, that reckless abandonment. Let me tell you, those days when we started ministry here, you would see the ladies, including hot CC ladies, when it's time to pray, they will roll under the anointing from one point to the other. They will stand up with the whole the whole paraphernalia rumpled to pieces. It matters how we are taught. It matters who defines your spiritual value. Who cultivates your hunger and your appetite for the things of God. The keys of the kingdom now i said that because it was important to lay this foundation but in this refresher series my, my goal is really not to touch on these basics now i want to refresh and show us again and i'm praying in the name of jesus christ remember it's this week and next week i'm praying that what you did not see before may you see it now how do i know i have caught light the results the results show that the light has come if the results cannot show with time then the light never came how do I know how can I trust the content of the information I have one of the greatest um, concerns and prayer in my life is not to believe a lie that I should not believe something I hold true and find out after many years that I've been wasting my time believing in a lie. The Bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness. There are things people have believed about prosperity that is punishing them today because the content was wrong. There are things people believe about church and ministry and ministry growth today that is making them languish in failure in spite of the fact that they are anointed. There is a, an exact body of knowledge are located for the truths that you desire and I'm going to run through them this week and next week can you lay hands on your head and command that in the name of Jesus your understanding is fruitful lift your voice and pray please pray speak to my mind be open
Hallelujah. Now, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Let's go back, please. And let's deal with these issues now. Sincerely, it's my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ that we'll hold these keys and we will rise in a way and manner. The mysteries of the kingdom demystify life. They bring you to a point where you see that life is not as complicated as it looks. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Say, I receive it. I receive. And whatsoever you bind, the word bind there should not confuse you. Declare to be improper. A particular version says, disallow. And then it talks about allowing. Now watch this. Notice the sequence according to Amplify. That it is what has been bound in heaven. You replicate it in the earth. And what has been allowed in heaven. You replicate it. So the keys are keys that allow you to replicate heaven. Remember the sequence is that it be done in the earth. As it is in heaven. It is not going to be done in heaven. As it is done in the earth. So realities are first finished in the heavenlies and then they are replicated in the earth. The keys of the kingdom. Still amplified Psalm 82. Let's start from verse 5. Still amplified. Very powerful rendition. It says, they know not amplified amplified keep amplified there please it says the magistrate and the judges know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness of complacent satisfaction and all the foundations of the earth the fundamental principles upon which rest the administration of justice are shaking six i said you are gods since you judge on my behalf as my representatives indeed all of you are children of the most high verse 7 let's shout it together one to go but you shall die as men and fall as one of the princes so the keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge the keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge specific knowledge that gives us enlightenment and authority access to spiritual truth access to information illumination these are the keys that make for dominion so the bible says there are things that have been permitted to walk in the heavenlies and there are things that are not permitted to walk in the heavenlies. When you obtain the keys of the kingdom in terms of spiritual knowledge and information, they are the keys that activate and deactivate possibilities in the earth realm. These are the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Please understand, I'm teaching now. They are the keys that activate. There are possibilities, but they must be activated through knowledge. And there are possibilities that can be deactivated. For instance, premature death is a possibility. It can be deactivated. Like you detonate a bomb. Are we together? Long life is a possibility, but it's activated. Delay is a possibility, activated. Speed is a possibility activated mediocrity these are all possibilities in the earth realm and so he says i give you keys that means i give you access to i i will bring a file and run through all the possibilities available to mankind choose the ones to activate and set them ablaze in your life and deactivate all the ones you will find some already activated the average believer when he comes into christ when you are born either by territory or culture or ordinances there are possibilities already activated for you they were activated through covenants they were activated through yokes your assignment is to know the keys of the kingdom like a pilot sitting and say no i off this 
I off this. Delaying destiny, I off this. Mediocrity, I off this. I put on the switch of speed. I put on the switch of the anointing. Why am I a pastor with no members? I deactivate it. He said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Please listen very carefully. Please sit down. You will find the possibility of poverty activated and tied there many families to remain so. But you come through knowledge and you find out that this is not a possibility in the economy of God. And you are shown the key to bring it down. And suddenly your life changes. And they say, are you not someone who is associated with this territory? You say, no more. The keys and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Listen, the Bible says, speaking to Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and see. That means from where you are, you can go anywhere, but there is a key that takes you there. You don't need to go somewhere else. From where you are, your location, your territory, notwithstanding, you can rise from there. Please pay attention because what I show you will disarm principalities and powers. What I show you will tame life and you will play life like a chess. People will only look forward to your downfall as a prophecy that has failed already. You are, you are standing with stability. You are not afraid of your results. They came by light. Let me tell you this. Any dimension you step into, not by understanding, you will be afraid of the results. Because the boundaries of the spiritual knowledge that should give you confidence and stability is not there. A car comes to you and you are afraid. What if it spoils? Will another one come? But there is a body of knowledge that when you know, it gives you stability. If God says give the car, you will give it number one out of faith, but number two out of understanding of not just God alone. The economy of the system has been opened to you. The major assignment of a believer is growth. The major assignment of a believer is enlightenment. Being brought through the power of light to a spiritual dimension where ignorance fades away. Not boastfulness, not arrogance, but you come to a place of stability. I know whom I have believed. Ah. And I am persuaded. See, there are things when you tell me today, it is going to be stupid for me to be worried about. No. Like the future of the ministry, like what makes you believe that in the next five to ten years, the ministry will be standing strong. You see, Fear truly comes because of ignorance. There are things I've found in my life like gems. And I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, dear ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the spirit that enlightens, brings light, may that grace open you up to light. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, See, let me tell you, when you talk, there will be mockers. There will be foolish men who think you are a talkative until you see the unlimited power. These are keys. They are not suggestions. They are keys. They are backed up by God's integrity. They are not backed up by a professor, a governor, a president, a monarch. This is God we are talking about here. Please sit down. I feel sad and respectfully speaking, I submit to you that I feel sorry for any man in our generation today who ignores access to this body of light. He has only signed himself and his generation to a life of pain and tragedy. I don't care who and I don't care what arrogance is back of that ignorance. 
there are truths when you ignore it's a generation that pays for it it's not an individual listen you are hearing the things that you are hearing blessed are your ears revelation says for they hear these things the truths that you are hearing are a word that is coming to Jacob and is coming for the sake of Israel when God wants to visit Israel he finds Jacob and sends a word to Jacob and it lightens upon Israel thou will show me the path of light for in your light we see light who can claim to see when God has not shown you light what are you seeing Job 29 and verse 3 Job 29 and verse 3 please let's hurry up let's work together media Job 29 and verse 3 Job is speaking now when his candle did what shined upon where my head not upon my feet the first assignment of the light of God is not your feet is to shine upon your head to take away that darkness that vagueness that assumption it may be an age old age old assumption but it's still an assumption a popular assumption is still an assumption and then he says and by his light I walk through darkness that a man can find his way out of light and you find your way and stand in a position where your life becomes a living wonder not that you walk miracles you are one yourself a living miracle your life is a message whether you are preaching or not this is what God is making you become and listen to me you don't become it just by wish you are exposed to an organized body of spiritual knowledge understand my choice of words not every spiritual information makes men there must be an organized body of spiritual knowledge allocated for the various dimensions of God that you want to see manifest in your life when you learn this let me see the power let me see the cause let me see the yoke let me see the enchantment let me see the divination let me see the scourging tongues of men and the ill wishes of men that sustains the power to keep you down it no longer exists you will know how cheap darkness is when you stand from a point of spiritual illumination it is true that when the light shines in darkness truly the darkness does not comprehend it where we are right now we have to admit is a product of an inaccurate understanding of the body of knowledge allocated for the results we desire please hear me I'm careful to say this thing because sometimes it looks like pride you hear people prophesy I did this I did this and favor came and for me it's not the testimony do you know what you did and can you do it any result that cannot be reproduced is not a real result you can stumble into results but sustainable results that dumbfound the pride of this arrogant age must come by knowledge apostle you don't understand my situation that's why if you were my shoes no sir I respect your pain but I admit to you your pain is proof of the dominion of darkness let light come and you will watch what happens because every desire that we have there is an allocation an allocation of it based on the Word of God and if it is not captured in my life I must admit that there is something I do not know the earlier you admit that there's something you did not know the better for you quickly don't wait till you fail for a long time the moment you start failing stop 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 immediately and say I'm not continuing until I'm sure of what I'm doing that way you will redeem time many people fail for many years they are humbled by life before they have to come back and say okay I didn't get it let me get it now you will thank me for the truths that I share with you you will thank me for the truths that I show you. 
Hallelujah. Now let's explore some keys of the kingdom. Number one. There's part one and there's part two. The first key is found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Everybody read the first four words. Please shout it as loud as you can. First four words. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. One more time. Last time now. This is the first law. When God does not begin a thing, it has failed. In the beginning of anything, it's not knowledge. In the beginning of anything, it's not skill. In the beginning of anything, it's not connection. In the beginning of anything, it's God. I am Alpha Omega. Don't call me to join something you started. If I do not begin it, my commitment is not there. I show you a powerful secret. In the beginning of your business, God. In the beginning of your marriage, God. In the beginning of your exploits, in the beginning of ministry. This is a secret that has changed my life. Anything God does not start, He will not back. He has to start it as Alpha because when He starts it, you will use His methods. You will not use your method and call on Him to back it later. Our proud world today thinks God is only useful for spiritual life. When they want to do business, they take God out. When they want to do ministry, they take God out. Love and relationship, they take God out. Everything, they take God out. But I show you the first four words. Keep it there, please, media. This is the first spiritual law that I want to show you tonight. In the beginning of my life, God. In the beginning of my ministry, not passion, not desire, not assignment consciousness, God. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. I don't see myself, I don't see my achievements. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice and praise, it's you that I see. In the beginning of my marriage or my desire to marry, beauty, you are joking, you will pay for it. The beginning of my desire to marry a macho, handsome guy with a job with NMPC, you will pay for it eventually. In the beginning of my business, intelligence and a well accredited mentorship, you have, you have failed already. The first secret to excelling in life is for God to not be a participant but the alpha of all that you do don't call God to participate in an idea that you finish with yourself you organized it you chose your life partner you chose how many children you will give birth to and you say God come and bless it no God does not work like that you started your business you chose your location by yourself you even bought the first consignment as soon as it arrived Nigeria said Lord here it is it's yours it's not his own you started your ministry, decided where the church will start. You already ordained pastors. You called members. You called everybody and you said, Lord, behold your, 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 your assembly. No, sir. The great know the secret to lifting. They don't move. Moses said, do not send us away from here 
we cannot start this journey oh, if your presence will not go with us we are wasting our time it didn't say if our weapons don't go with us it didn't say if our goal a man that had gold had weapons yet he's saying these things are mundane god if you will not go with me please don't send me how shall they know that we're people that are separate and god says you got it my presence will go with you and i will give you rest the bible says for with god all things for with god not for when you are moving and you say, okay god why are you leaving me oh yeah now come and hurry up and join and then you say god come no sir no sir no sir lord where are you if you will not lead i'm not going i'm not going lord if you will not lead me in ministry i'm not going is it not written in your bible that if the lord is your shepherd you shall not want thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he said i am the vine don't be confused we are together but you are the branches you are not the vine i am the vine you are connected to me but you are the branch he distributes it very clearly our dominion is shared dominion not dominion that is derived by our own strength it's a secret that i've worked with in my life my brothers and my sisters i have no business going where god is not going it is not my concern at all the pressures of life will push you to many things and places where god is not there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death what looks cheap now will be costly when you start paying for it when we're about to start this ministry haven't done everything by the spirit three days before koinonia would start we had done crusades. We had been in ministry for a while. But before Koinonia would start, I still went back for a retreat. God, please, one more time. Are you the one speaking? And are you still leading? I tell you the truth. If God said no, that would be the end of it. He must lead the way. When he leads the way, you will follow. Now, thanks be to God who causes us like a blind man how many of you have seen a blind man walking accurately it's not because he can see he's following a man who can see and the man will lead him many people do not know this dimension of god we start things by emotion and then we ask god to join when things begin to backfire and god says no 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 you're on your own start with god in your life and watch your life turn into a sign and a wonder no matter how bad it looks if God says I am there go 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 I remember years ago the things that we now walk in God said so and I said Lord if you lead we are going home. and look what God has done and look what he continues to do in the beginning god please return to the place of prioritizing god don't use god let him lead the way many of us only say yes to god if we said yes to it already you just say god just help me confirm no you must be flexible lord is this ministry your will i've been in it for 10 years but talk to me now if it is not you i'm closing it this night many of us our ego will not allow us to be that obedient is god speaking to us in the beginning god let god start your life so whatever happens you can say god please i'm here if god directs you and grants you approval and you get married to a wife and that lady becomes barren two years three years you have a legal right to go to God with your wife stand with God and say Lord you are the one that joined us all we came to you you gave us the right to choose but we returned it to you and we say we don't trust ourselves guide our decision 
and you guided us now the devil is bringing barrenness you put pressure on his integrity and he will have to arise if you call me and you are around maybe a bank somewhere and you say you don't have money and I say pick the bike and come and meet me you told me already you don't have money but I said you should come by the time you come and you cannot pay the bike who will pay for it I ask you to come I must take responsibility for your obedience you will always be afraid to go to God when he did not start with you what will you go and tell God now of course his mess is there but you cannot stand now and say oh God this wife you gave me mm -mm, mm -mm. you were at the beer parlor under the heavy and then on that day you drank unusually and it's from the standpoint of that drunkenness you made a destiny decision and now you have to pay for it of course God is a merciful God and he can restore but the truth is before the restoration comes you'll be paying for it until the word of the Lord came the word tried him look at me please don't be too big to allow God start don't feel my ego is there I'm too intelligent let church not not make me a dull person I'm intelligent I went to school not destiny not destiny you must learn to step back and say oh God of heaven I declare before you sincerely there is nothing that I know moves God like a broken and a contrite heart let God find a man who is genuinely broken and contrite he will veto whatever is wrong and come a broken heart is a real invitation for his presence are we together let me give us one more ah, there are keys so oh. the keys are many you hold them and hang them like a chain a chain of royalty a royal diadem and you move through life you stand by this door you remove one key you open it there are doors you don't just open you break the door so that others can pass too because you can pass and the door will be locked he has broken the gates of brass not opened it broken it and cut the bars of iron in sunder so that others can pass will I pass a door and my child will not pass number two I, are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Please use this. Please use this. God told me something years ago and said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. In other words, if like John, you agree to decrease. John said in John chapter 3 and verse 31, he says that I may decrease so that you may increase. And I, if I be lifted up, not you, if you are lifted up you will fall but if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men when they bow down to Jesus they also bow down to the donkey that was carrying him when they put the leaves on the ground for Jesus to walk his feet never touched the palm but it was the donkey that carried him who told you when you carry Jesus you fail it's an honor to let the world see him. It's something I've learned in ministry. It's something I've learned in my life. Sincerely, my desire, I tell you, is not for fame. It's not for power. It's not for money. I desire from the depth of my heart to represent the face of God to a generation. To show a generation that it pays to lift the name of the Lord it pays to be passionate over the things of God in a man's lifetime and I remember when God showed me a vision and I saw a generation of men I was standing somewhere no food no water they were crying 
that whole generation and i came to them i said why they said you are the reason and i was afraid to go because a few people were looking for me and i made up my mind that i will go if i perish i perish as soon as i stepped out i saw a giant man and he held my hands he said let's go for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be When God begins your life, the passion for fame dies, I tell you. The passion to prove a point, the celebrity obsession dies at once. I want to be known so that I prove to other people I'm not a failure. It's totally unnecessary. Provided in your journey is enough evidence of the hand of God. I tell you why God does not use many people. It's not because they don't pray. It's not because they don't fast. It's not because they are not holy. Because the corruption in their heart, the dimension of obsession for fame, and the, some of you, as you are looking at me like this, if, if a drop of anointing comes on your destiny, God will not hear you again. Everybody must bow down to you. Everybody must kneel down and lie down to greet you. And you will keep the person there for everybody to see. Before you say, now you can stand up, my, my dear son. All this pride that continues to kill men. I tell you why many people do not rise. There are some of us, we have it hidden. Some of us are boastful and outspoken about it. Others are quiet, but it's still there. Waiting for something to bring it out. That, that, that appetite to outshine is a loss that needs to crumble at his presence. In the beginning, God. And at the end of it, God. If nobody ever sees me today, and all they see is God and his mighty works, sincerely I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you I am satisfied. I am. The things that you see and hear God doing through my life and this ministry, I stand and I bless him for it. But let me tell you this. You ask God, he will tell you. I have no business trying to search for fame, apostle Joshua Selman, the great man of God. Thank God for all of those things. But my brothers and my sisters, I'm wise enough to know that without him, I can do nothing. Get to that point in your life where everything about God is your obsession. Don't use God to get fame. Listen, let me tell you, many people leave God to try to get money and you find out how much have you gotten? How much? You have just gotten trouble all around. When God swears over you, to lift you let any obstacle clear that way because even if you are a believer it will crush you when God vows upon a man listen if you can make this vow this night and say Lord I give up this search for to be known now sometimes it's not demonic it's because of our background we came from backgrounds where and some of us our cultures you derive respect from the money the Jeep the car, the house, the moment that is there, they say, ah, you are a real man. Thank God for culture, but please be born again. Please be born again. Don't just be saved, be born again. Subscribe to another culture. Let me tell you this. When you hide behind the cross, that is the way the whole world sees you. The secret to your being seen is he's being seen when they see jesus they have to see you my life is a testimony my brothers and my sisters hear what i teach you and be wise 
and rise from this mediocrity in life it does not start with just intellect there is a place for all these things but don't forget these first four words that start your Bible in the beginning God not in the middle then God comes <clears throat> in the beginning God this is how I run my life it is God who everything I have belongs to him you never hear me say you only hear me say my thing just in terms of responsibility but God knows if he started the beginning then anything I find there is his own before I came my house is his own my cars his own the influence his own the fame his own the anointing his own I'm only a steward and I remain a steward forever and the Bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful I show you why only few people ever rise in a generation it's not Rema it's not miracles you can walk every miracle you know and be shocked that your influence never grows you can have every revelation you have and move in dimensions of power never seen and be shocked that people receive your miracles and still despise you let all the other names fade away let that be your prayer let every other name fade away Till there's only you every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Every other name fade away. Listen down. Let's start the second. The second is almost a master key, except that it submits to God too. The second is almost a master key. Listen, listen. What I'm about to share with you now will take away worry from your life. This worry about what to eat. This worry about what to wear. This worry about how you will become famous. It will fade completely and live your life. This is a revision series. You may not have gotten it the last time but please get it now success is not pursued success is not pursued success is not what you look for you will never find it success was designed to come just like fate just like fate comet you don't pursue faith. Uh -uh. You don't pursue success. Please hear me. Success is what is attracted to you by reason of who you are becoming. Not what you are doing. Who you are becoming. Please understand this spiritual law and stop wasting your time looking for mundane things that will never come. Success is not what you pursue. Seeking success is a cause. Spending your life looking for it is a cause. Are we together? Now, please look up. Let me teach. Um, come, gentlemen. Let me have six or eight gentlemen. Sit down, Pastor Alfon. Sit down. Please come. Sit down. You come quickly so that we we'll save time. Just stand this way stand facing me space yourselves thank you thank you and you stand um, my friend you stand here watch this everybody thank you now please watch this call all of these people the needs of men say the needs of men one more time please shout it say the needs of men call sam is looking sharp call this financial prosperity you are all looking sharp eh? my dear people you are all looking sharp now watch this Call this financial prosperity. That's what you are looking for. Are we together? Call this marital peace. Oh, how we need it. Marital peace. 
Are we together? Call this influence and fame. We need it too. Social media world. We need it a lot. Likes and follows. Call this speed. Are we together? Call this, what do you call this? Favor. Ah, koinonia. Favor. Favor. And then call this impact. Now watch this. This is me. Help me. Starting out my life with zero possibilities. Zero possibilities. Now watch this. Did you know how frustrating it will be for me, ladies and gentlemen, to start pursuing these things one by one? These six only represent the uncountable needs that represent success to men. And we think that the way to become successful is to isolate these things one by one and begin to seek them. That burden is too much. An intelligent God will not design success that way. Are we together now? So when you pursue success, it means if you are to spend 120 years on earth, you spend 30 years seeking, no money is even a lifetime, you spend 30 years seeking a wife or a husband, another how many years seeking all of these things, your lifetime together will not allow you to get them. This is the cause of the fallen man. To seek things one by one. Jesus rebuked people again and again for seeking things. He says, the Gentiles run after these things. They run after. They run after. But your heavenly father knows that ye have need of it. Now watch this. This is how God designed the kingdom. I pray for you that you will get this once and for all. Now watch this. At this level, notice my prayer. I'm a prayer warrior. Oh God, open the windows of heaven. Finances, give me finance. Oh God, a good wife, good children. I will never give birth to an armed robber. I won't give birth to a thief. At this level, your prayer is valid. Because there are many things you do not know. Father, grant me favor in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant me fame. Grant me speed. And I'm praying. And sometimes I'm tempted to leave God to quickly get them. Now watch this. All these guys represent levels. Everybody say levels. They represent dimensions. Say dimensions. For every level I get to, designed by God, are the possibilities already allocated to gravitate towards my growth at that level. So human beings are inversions. Are we together now? There is a version of me that cannot be a millionaire. No. It is God's law that will stop that version from being a millionaire. It's not an attack. If I pray to be a millionaire, God will answer me by providing the growth that takes me to the realm where that possibility was allocated. Please understand what I'm teaching you. Now, the challenge with believers is that we stay where we are and we try to use prayer to, what are you called? Impacts. Now, I'm here oh, full of ignorance and pride. And yet, I want to make Benny Hinn's impact. And I borrowed the impact for two weeks like a rubber ring. What happens? It will leave me again. Anything that does not come to you because of your growth must leave you. It will leave as losses it will live as armed robbers it will live as thieves forget about the actors there is a law that compels that any level that you any object you get that does not resonate with your growth must leave you it's a law i show you the laws of the kingdom i show you the way we grow now watch this these guys are standing here. Now, gentlemen, this is what I want you to do. For every step I take forward, you two take a step forward. Are, are we together? Now, watch this. I am here, and I was invited to come for Koinonia. A broke, confused, wearing my smelly cloth. All I know is God. And I have the, the opportunity to sit under a heavy anointing and mentorship. And now I am taught certain things. Watch this. As the word of God is shining upon my mind, I may not know what I'm doing, 
but I'm taking a step and the things I'm looking for are also taking a step are you seeing that now all at once or this is what will happen step back when I step to your level you step forward are we together now watch this I am here right now and I move forward and these guys come now notice without prayer some results start coming because I grew there now my eye is here and it's good to look far but it's not going to come to your life listen hold on let me teach you something if Papa E.A. Adeboye today empties his account this night before 12 noon millions will come back I will tell you why it's not because there are givers it's not because he's a man of God when the money disappears the law of God will send a signal to heaven that this growth level should not have this kind of account reflect the justice system of God must balance that destiny this is what physics has tried to describe a long time ago that there is a system of balance in life it is not a lie please understand this now watch this I sit down here as a confused Christian and if I'm not properly mentored I quickly come here and lie down on someone's BMW and just say it is mine if you mean it is yours with the law of process and engaging this you are right but you mean you want it now even if they give you now there is a system design that will take it from you see let me tell you it is why many people never hold on to things sustainably they have balloon success they open up today and shrink back again there were certain things that it would be stupid for me to desire 10 years ago 15 years ago no growth brought it so I'm growing Shaka Bakatosia praying every day as I'm learning a key as I'm sowing seeds as I'm building look at what I'm doing it's moving towards me moving towards me are you seeing that now a time will come where everything that I see come gentlemen I will be immersed in my possibilities I can no longer leave them it will not make a difference again whether I give or don't give financially speaking I've entered a realm of financial equilibrium where what goes and what comes it doesn't make a difference the only thing is just my faith with God but at this level when I give I will know it I will know something left me now watch this let me tell you what God is doing to you every week you are coming you are right here you may not know what is happening listen to me please just be sensitive and pay attention you may not know what it is that is happening to you but this is the law of God man of God don't sit back just admiring everybody while you are praying you are learning the principles you are learning leadership what you are doing is you are walking through life what you are looking for is also looking for you what you are looking for is also looking for you a day will come by the Spirit of God hear me please that day except God is not God a day will always come that includes the anointing watch this call these dimensions of the anointing my brothers you cannot stand at this level and want to operate in the anointing and in the spirit at this level no matter what impartation all this double portion prayer of course is just a sincere prayer by well-meaning people even the man of God knows it's not double portion that came on that person it just fell down so that it's just hunger that was imparted to go back to the secret place this is where Benny Hinn started and he kept growing he kept growing he has to touch everybody here for them to be imparted and he will be tired from hours of personal ministration but as he stepped up he got to a level where his word became his hands it can reach people and touch them it doesn't matter where now watch this at this level the anointing will not move till you play the keyboard clash the cymbal charge everywhere till there is prayer till the people fast till their hearts are open he thinks that's how God operates until he comes higher you get to a realm where someone can be doubting you and still go under the anointing he does not believe you he even hates you yet he's rising from a wheelchair so what took him up
for every time you backslide this is what happens every time you are offended and angry i won't go to church again i'm tired this is what you are doing to yourself shifting you father sincerely this thing i'm acting is how destiny works let me tell you this business people hear me if you believe that you will imaginarily stumble into millions just by meeting a business or an investment or become just stumble into it you are joking it will leave you it is only growth that has the power to keep any possibility so the way we succeed is not what we do it is who we become there is a version of me that should not be inside an aircraft if I enter an aircraft the aircraft will throw me out are we together there is a version of me that should not have a car if I want a car I don't look for a car I grow into the realm where a car was allocated so when I'm here watch this in this realm as provided by God there should be cars and there should be houses if God says so your car and you give it the realm itself will look for a replacement it is God's system there is a level that you stand you will never have more than 500 members it doesn't matter how many days you fast you cannot have it your mind and your growth does not allow it you can stand and be offended the more you insult a man that has a crowd and say what is crowd this is what you are doing to your own results you are authorizing the realm of the spirit to reject you when those possibilities come near you but when you stand and grow and say lord what did you show them as the light of god is shining upon your head you are moving from obscurity from mediocrity please understand what i teach you this is how the great rise that's why they are not afraid of their growth they did not jump they grew and jesus increased listen let me tell you this forget about poverty and forget about all of these things i'm not saying don't pay attention to them do you know you will grow and not know when this realm the possibilities there left you which tailor will sew my cloth oh you go around looking for a tailor you will die looking for a tailor just grow the tailor is waiting for the renewed version of you there is a realm where a tailor has been kept to adorn you did joseph look for the person who put his garment was he not in the prison the garment maker was waiting for the renewed version of him there are many things you are praying for now that have been answered already in your growth let me get a jeep what is jeep my brothers and my sisters don't mock the investment of the spirit upon your life when you know this anybody that receives a miracle it's like the hand of a clock rotating you start rejoicing because it's the same thing you are hearing and you know that your turn is coming see let me tell you come when you stand at this realm and people begin to pray and say we know that one day it will go down this money will go down the crowd you see the foolishness of the imagination of weak men you are not here by luck the justice of God is what backs the result at this level the only thing God can do with you is to vet you based on his eternal standard. But as far as these things live in you, it will never go again. The only thing is that your system of accreditation and growth and vetting is not these things. No matter how God punishes you, please hear me, these things will not live. The only way these things will live is when you go back. And you cannot undo what you already know that is the reason why Lucifer the light bearer can still make you prophesy can still make you wealthy Lucifer you can go to Satan because he stood in a position as the exalted light bearer of God and there were possibilities that were tied to his office when he fell the possibilities did not go the knowledge is still with him therefore the results still continue to come it is true it is true 
there is a version of Jesus that 5,000 men could not come to. Not the baby in the manger. Not the 12-year-old Jesus. Not even the 30 unbaptized Jesus. There was a version of Jesus that creation was waiting for. And the Father told that version, creation, now hear ye this version. Not the version in the tabernacle. Hear me. Everything you are looking for is looking for you. But not this version of you. So once and again, your future keeps coming to you and checking if you are there. And returns back and says, we have not yet seen him. Your future is answering God. So the Bible says creation is waiting. Waiting for the manifest. Creation keeps checking. Are they there? He says they are not yet there. But when you grow, you will grow to a realm where creation will now see the manifestation of the sons of God. Please hear me. There is a version of this ministry that we cannot go to at this level. No. There is a level of grace and power and intelligence and knowledge. The future of this ministry is already waiting. Checking for us and saying Koinonia has not arrived. In that future, Koinonia is not yet there. If we stop here, God will have to make do with what is available. But that's not what would have been. So when we continue to grow, a day will come, this building will start driving us. This building, like a living thing, will start saying, go out. Go out of this environment. And the environment waiting for us will start saying, come, you are ready. There is a way you will grow that the house you are staying now will drive you. It must drive you. The key is not to start looking for another house. The key is to wait. You will know you are ready when the house starts driving you. There are clothes you are wearing today that will run away. You will not give it. You will not sew it, but you will not find it. The same way you could not find the former ones you are wearing. Where were they? Where are they now? The clothes you wore 10 years ago, where is it? You did not pack it in a bag and sewed it. Where did it go to? Please understand what I teach you. These are the secrets that the Lord brought to me and gave me rest. I don't chase things. You can stay from your room and like a magnet attract anything from the globe. Provided it is on earth, they will walk like the animals. This was the strategy that brought the animals to the ark of Noah. The animals were in the bush. If Noah went looking for them one by one, he would die there. I show you this from scripture. Noah built the ark. The moment the ark was ready, this law started calling the animals. One by one, they started marching. If animals came to the ark, your money is on earth, but the hand to collect it is not this hand. There is a hand that is trained by the Lord. When you lift it from all over the earth, it will come. There was a time in this ministry, I'm rounding up, we didn't have a domiciliary account. Not because we didn't see the need to. We just felt no problem when the time comes, we'll cross. Do you know how we opened a domiciliary account? I'm just giving you an example in this ministry. I was somewhere when the manager of GT Bank here, the manager called me and he said, sir, I need to talk to you. I'm the manager of GT Bank. I said, okay, no problem. And then I spoke with him and he said, someone, people have been trying to make transfers, international transfers. And here and there, they change it to Naira and send it. But that mm -mm, the, the, is becoming overwhelming. And one did not care whether you have an account or not. He sent the money and the money has been hanging with no account to credit it. And he said, please, can we open an account? That was a sign. I said, we have gotten there. We have gotten to that level. If I open a domiciliary account 20 years ago for the ministry or 15 years ago, let me tell you what will happen. It will keep being dormant. You will reopen, dormant, reopen, dormant, reopen until the day your growth gets there, then you call it breakthrough. It was not just breakthrough. It was growth. Ah, rejoice not over me, my enemies. What you are mocking me with is in my future. I just need to grow there. My brothers and sisters, hear me. What is a house that it should intimidate you? What about the paint cannot be manufactured again? What about the space? Just be patient and grow. 
when you get to that point you will grow there you can pass through life and keep drawing results like a rubber ring they will shoot back and leave you in shame i choose the way of growth there are levels this ministry has not gotten to i'm not ashamed we will stay honorably and grant god grace to take us there but when we get there there is a level we get to where the satellites will start calling and say come 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 at that level you will find out that five or six business partners will come and say apostle we are paying for the tv station of this ministry for 10 years you know growth by the ease it brings when there is unnecessary suffering and difficulty sometimes it's not just pushing through by faith is that you are forcing life to deliver a result you have not gotten yet amazing the things i so desired in my life and the way they come now that you cannot even drive them these are the keys of the kingdom so you can stay from one room and your mind is in an estate not just by wishful thinking you can stay as a man of god and everybody is despising you they are not seeing the grace of god upon your life don't worry you don't have to move around with cats and saying do you know i'm anointed i've been watching you you are acting as if i'm not a man of god don't worry let me tell you if you remain in the same position it is not just an attack it is proof that you are not growing you know you are growing by the possibilities that start leaving and others that start coming there are things your yesterday should leave you for your tomorrow to come if your yesterday follows you into your today you are still in yesterday Are we together? Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you and may you not forget this thing. Please rise up, hold hands together. Our time is gone. Hold hands with someone we have to pray tonight. Hold someone's hands. There is no need to rush. All provided for in your growth. All provided for. Listen to me. Listen to me. Pastor Femi's tiny baby girl. Do you know that small girl has a womb? But that womb cannot have a child. Why? Growth. The womb is there. But the womb cannot be with child give him a few years and he will not only be a father but he will be a grandfather sponsored by what growth men of god hear me don't be part of any diabolic association and any fraternity of evil doers because you are trying to grow in ministry just grow just grow and let me see the darkness that will cover your impact. Just grow. As far back as April or May this year, my schedules up until June 2020 has been full. It is growth. Imagine that I have to go around every church and every place and say do you know i'm anointed have you not heard of one guy called apostle joshua selman <laughs> let me even talk for my you see if you act like that you will you will embarrass yourself there are many doing it if you have to advertise yourself it's proof that there are no results most people don't know the power of results results are so powerful and it was noised abroad that Jesus was in town. Please pay attention this week and don't miss church on Friday. Go back after this prayer. I apologize, our time is gone. Go and meet the media after the prayer or go on YouTube. Search for all the teachings where I taught on the mysteries of the kingdom and success system use this week to sit down on it if you can fast even for one or two days add it 
don't listen to it on your way to the office you will not understand anything there settle down with destiny lie down on the ground as a man of god carry what please pray and pray for an enlightened mind pray your way out of that level understand your way out of that realm and get to a realm where no power and no enchantment is able to stand you pray in one minute for the person whose hands you are holding father my brother my sister must step into a realm of extraordinary fruitfulness please make sure you are praying You will get to a point where your life becomes a praise to the nations. A generation cannot ignore you. It's impossible. Impossible. Awesome God. How great thou art. You alone, mighty are your miracles. I stand in awe of your holiness. Lord, we bow and worship. Pray. Ala baranda kata brada gadesh, abaranda kaparusa I leave this realm and I never return. I rise like the eagle. I rise like the eagle. I rise like the eagle by the Spirit of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen, the last prayer point and we're done tonight. Let it be a passionate prayer. Father, turn me into a sign and a wonder. Please pray that prayer. Not that I walk signs and wonders. Let my life be a testament, a sign and a wonder. Let my life be a sign and a wonder. Let my life be a sign and a wonder. A demonstration of what God can do in and through men that can believe Him and understand His ways. Turn my life to a sign and a wonder. Turn my life to a sign and a wonder in the mighty name of Jesus turn my life to a sign and a wonder hallelujah Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you see, dear people of God, hear me. There is nothing that should intimidate you about any man's results. It is not magic. There is no result on earth today that cannot be replicated. None. Not one. There is no result on this earth today that cannot be replicated. There is no reason to be intimidated. It is only the understanding that we need to have and follow through life to a realm where you become a wonder first to yourself and to everybody, to all and sundry. And then your life becomes a praise to the name of the Lord. 
you may not look like it now but hear me my brothers and my sisters be patient with god and be patient with destiny let god finish his working in your life you will turn back and all you will see left and right is the praises of his name may that be our testimony in the name of jesus christ father we give you praise tonight in the name of jesus christ dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline